Okay, in this video, we're going to get more in-depth with the Ford AOD and 4R70W linkage, which I covered somewhat already in another video called Tech Tips Tools Tuesday, and that was episode four. So I get a lot of questions about these linkages because there are so many different ones. See how different that one is from this one? And this one, if the one you're looking for happens to be this one, there's the Ford part number right there, E-O-W-P-B-B. -B. Of course, if you recognize this one as one you're looking for, you're out of luck on a part number because it doesn't have a casting number on it. And, but then this one right here, a little bit different bend, is an E9 SPBA. And if you're not familiar with Ford part numbers, the E9 means that it, it was cast in 1989. And you can see this, this linkage is completely different. Of course, actually... That one's not even AOD. I don't know how it even end, end up in this box or for our 70W. That is either old C6 or something of that nature. This, however, is a 4R70W because it, it has no place for the throttle valve rod to go through. It's cast F4SP, and that makes sense because it'd be a, probably an AODE, not a 4R70W, because that would be cast in 1994, first year of the AODEs. Well, second year, because there were AODEs in 93. See the, the hole I was talking about for the rod for the throttle valve. This is the inner rod for the throttle valve. And this is one of the outer linkages for the throttle valve. And if you're looking for this really crooked one, it's almost C-shaped. It's an E6ZPA. And now I'm going to start going into an actual transmission and taking apart the linkage and putting it back together so you can see if you already took your linkage apart and can't remember where some of the stuff goes or if you're having trouble getting it apart I'll be showing you a few tips and tricks there to, to help you with getting it apart correctly but most of all with getting it back together correctly without damaging anything this is what it looks like before you take anything loose as you move the MLPS lever back and forth. It's here, down here, and this is engaged well with the manual valve. You'll notice this one, the nut has come loose and the rooster comb wiggles around. But if it were all the way tight, like that. Back and forth like that. And then your throttle valve right here. One of the problems people have is that'll be in there like that. It'll get caught behind here. And then they'll tighten this nut and pull on that. And it breaks this inner throttle valve linkage. It breaks it down here or bends it here and sometimes ruins this valve. And so if you have one that this is broken, that's what happened. You want to avoid letting this get caught behind here. It needs to be up here touching this valve right here and sticking out that far. You see how far it sticks out? If it's not sticking out that far, if it's down in here like that and it won't pull out, then you've got to take the pan off. Get it out from behind here. Don't just try to pull that up with a nut. You'll end up breaking this part. And this right here is the proper position for this spring. You see it goes down in that V groove right there. 
when you first put everything together and the valve body's not in here this will be laying down there like that see it way down in there and you have to fish it up out of there use like a 90 degree pick fish it up out of there and set it in that V groove right there when you look for the rod for the park rod you see it down there it's connected down here that's the proper connection for it and the proper place for the rooster comb is with that stop sticking over here towards the manual valve but you follow that park rod you can see it goes down in there you've had the, all this apart and you need to see it goes down in here between this hollow round almost a piece of pipe and the park paw park paw and you see the the spring that pulls the park paw up hooks around the park paw goes between the case and the park paw comes up and hooks onto the case right here so if you're having trouble remembering exactly how the spring went exactly how the park paw went exactly where the bullet for the park rod goes this is where it goes and if your fulcrum rod that goes for the park pole has fell out in the cleaner you have to have the tail housing to get it back in there the tail housing has to be off so while the tail housing's off you put your park pole in there and put the rod in there so if you've already put the tail housing on and your park pole and stuff isn't in there you're going to have to take the tail housing back off to get that fulcrum rod back in there. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Now the big nut comes Hold off. Hold on, it's not doing anything yet. Because it was. Okay. Now you take the big nut off here. Hold the rooster comb back. Wiggle this and pull it out. Make sure that's out from underneath there. Sometimes you gotta push that valve out. Don't lose this spring. Out. Work the inner TV rod out. Rooster comb and the rod. And just so you know, if this comes apart, it's supposed to be in this position right here. You're looking at this right here. You see that little relief? Turn this round and round at some point it will come off of there right there see it comes apart so if this is apart and you've got to put it back together and you need to know the right way to do it this faces toward the manual valve This goes in, down here, in right here like that, and it faces up here, faces this way. So before putting it in there, you see how that sticks up, and this has got the relief right here. What you'll need to do is put it together like so, in there. Spin this around. Put this bullet right here. And then this sits in with this face in the manual valve. This will go, this inner TV rod will go in like so. And make sure this does not get behind that. The spring, if you're watching, that hook right there has to go on the rod like so and grab this and spin it around to where this hooks right there make sure you got the big nut in there too and then that comes up and you lay it in this V groove and make sure this does not get behind there again See how it really goes up underneath there very easily? Then your linkage would go on that rod in here. 
you work it in until you can put the big nut on it. Manga valve will hook right here. And see, so you've got your fingers, my fingers holding this in place right there. My thumb is holding the manual valve while I work the linkage down in there. And there's two flats on this linkage. Can you look at the linkage from this angle? There's two flats on this linkage that have to be lined up with the rooster comb. And that's why you gotta have your thumb right there. Because push that the rest of the way in, tighten the nut, and line this up with the mango valve all at the same time. And once all that's done, that's when you can put your pin back in and you can put your nut back on the throttle valve. And that's all there is to it. You got a pretty good idea of what to do with the linkage by now. If you're putting together an AOD or if you're converting something older to an AOD, this is my Mach 1 that I converted to AOD, 72 Mach 1. Of course, there wasn't any AODs until 1980, so this is not factory, but this is what I came up with. And this is the arms that I used and the linkages that I used. And this is what it looks like when it's all together and actually working. This is the resting position of the throttle valve arm when at no throttle position. And when I hit the throttle, it pushes forward like so. That's full throttle. That's no throttle. You can see the sweep when using this arm. Now, of course, I've got enough room here in this 72 Mach 1. I could have used a straight arm. All right, another tech tip for you. This is going to be on AODs, 4R70Ws, those sort of things. Four trucks and rear-wheel drive passenger cars. And this is going to be on the linkage. Everybody struggles with these. I struggled with these pins for years myself. And one of the tricks that I have learned is you get a set of these little bitty, you know, Craftsman Allen wrenches. And you get to try them in here, try them in here till you find one that just barely fits down in the roll pin. Can you see that? And you push it down in there as far as you can get it to go because the more you get it down in there the better grip you get once you get it down in there and you want to turn it clockwise turn clockwise and then as you're turning slightly pull up as you turn and whoa look how easy that is now this is not one of those videos where I loosened it up first like you see on some of those other videos and they've obviously had it out already this one was not out before this is a virgin pen been in there for decades it comes out that easy the reason you turn clockwise if you look at this roll pen you can see it's got it's an actual rolled pen it's rolled up and rolled up and that edge points in the counterclockwise direction so if you try to turn it counterclockwise it just tightens up on you if you turn clockwise however it allows it to come right out and then of course you're going to take this nut loose and then this nut loose and it comes right out and when you go to take this nut loose make sure you turn this and let it hit right here to hold it still don't let it move up here if you've already got the pin out it can move over here and go down in there between the case so get it up against there then get your big wrench 
and break that nut loose. It's going to go, you're going to push it toward the bell housing. Okay, now this is a 21, 21 monkey meters. And break it loose, put it over there. Once you get just a little bit of a turn on it, you can actually spin it with your fingers. I mean, it didn't take but like an eighth of a turn. Just gonna, now you got to pull this rooster comb loose. There you go. And you get hold of the linkage and wiggle as you pull out, and it's right out of there. Now, of course, I, I did take this off with a half inch while the camera was off. And that allowed me to get that, and I had pulled this this way a little bit after I took the nut off to give more access to this big nut. And don't lose this spring. Pull this out, and you can grab here and pull that out so that it pulls right out of the back. And you've got the entire linkage out, and now you have access to this seal here, and you can replace the linkage seal. Now remember, burnt Brewster bleeding. If you don't want to be that, don't do this work. All right, here's another style of the linkage pin. It's not actually a rolled pin. Ford, in their infinite wisdom, decided on some of these models that they were going to put an aluminum pin down in here, which is even more difficult than the steel rolled pin. Now this is a medium set of side cutting pliers. It's not even the large set. And compared to this pin it looks enormous. It's huge. You don't want to use that. You would really be in a pickle if you do. This is a small set. And they make even smaller than this. You can find them at the hobby store or something that's even smaller than these. I would suggest you get that. Because even these look pretty... Now, you got to come from this side. You can't come from over here and come across. That's another common mistake people make. And they ruin the tip of the pin there. you got to get over from this side. Get as close as you can to this aluminum right here get up here as far as you can as flat as you can pinch it and then pull up with your hand and work it up just a little bit let go grab it again work it up just a little bit let go grab it again work it up just a little bit you keep working it keep working it now you see how it's come up just a little bit and oh there you can feel the breaking point where it finally lets go and you can get it out See, no drilling, no running the case or nothing. And that's the technique. That's the secret. Now, one more thing on this subject. When you are taking this first nut loose, do not grab this and just willy-nilly let this run back here and hit this part of where the valve body seals off, one of the warm tracks. It will damage this. Number two, the half inch and the 13 millimeters, very, very close. But you'll notice the half inch, this is not actually a half inch. The half inch doesn't want to go up on here. Don't force it. It's 13 millimeter. Instead of this coming around and damaging your worm track, you want to take a large screwdriver Put it down in here, get the flat of it, hit right here on the case. Bring this down until you can grab hold of the case over here. And hold the screwdriver in the case right there at the same time. Get your fingers right up against this part of the case. Wrap it around the wrench. Pop that loose. I know some of you can be saying, well, you could have just used the air gun and done that. 
Well, you still need to hold it with the screwdriver if you use the air gun because you could this could come around and just hammer your worm tracks and then do even more damage. You don't. That's all there is about that. Wiggle that. You're ready to take the nut off and get the rest of the linkage out. A little bonus information on this tech tip. Once you get this linkage out, look back here. You'll see there's another spring here. You'll want to take it out because this is one of the things that will get lost in the cleaning machine once you put it in the cleaner. Take that loose and then pull this pin out. Your parking pole comes out with that spring. You set all that aside so that it won't fall out in the cleaner and get lost. Go down in the cleaning machine, lost or destroyed. Okay, here's a couple of different throttle linkages to give an idea of where their position is on the AOD and what the sweep is. By that I mean how far they move during regular operation. You can see the casting number on this one is E6ZP. And this is the fully relaxed position, no throttle. And as the throttle gets depressed, it pulls and pulls and pulls and goes this far. And you can see down here how far that part of it goes, where that part goes. And then when the throttle relaxes, it goes back to this position here. Okay. And then if you were to put it on turned over, it would either sweep from there, like if you had the rods coming down, all the way down to there, back up, there, or if you had it on This position, which I don't know why you would ever have it in that position, but if you did, sweep from there to there. But this is the way I usually see them, factory, and they sweep from here to here. And the cable will be connected here, and come across here, connect up, and pull it back and forth between this position and this position. That's your options with that one. Now, the F2 SP AA fits on here, like so. And the ball ends up in a very similar position. Where the cable would come across here, connect, and then sweep from there to there. 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 An idea, and if it were turned over, which I don't see how that would be useful, but just in case you're trying to rig something up, you need to know you go from here to this position here. Righty, even if you don't count the park pole tension spring or the two seals, there's one seal here and another one between the linkage lever and the case. Even if you don't count those, there's still 10 parts to this linkage for the AODs and You'll need to know if you're trying to find one of these pieces or a piece that's different than yours for so you, you can put your hot rod together or your application or switch from car to truck or truck to car or whatever you're doing. 
you're going to have to know the n proper names of these pieces. So I hope I can help with this. This is actually the shift lever. So these parts here, how many different ones there are, probably as many as a dozen different ones. These are the shift lever. These other levers are the outer TV lever, or the outer throttle valve lever. It's connected to, with that small tiny nut, it's connected to the inner TV rod lever. You can see on the illustration here, the inner TV rod lever. That inner TV rod lever has a spring for the inner TV rod lever, a return spring. Then you have the rooster comb. Let's see, rooster comb right here. Then you have a park rod and a park rod bullet. Park rod and a park rod bullet. Then you have the parking pawl, the parking pawl fulcrum, and the parking pawl return spring. All right, now I hope all this information on the, the AOD linkage is helpful. And uh, good luck with your AOD linkage. And I've got a few more stills I'm going to put on this video, still photos of some AOD linkage that may be helpful to see how they're put together and where they go. And until the next video, get off the couch and get dirty.